गुड मॉर्निंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ऑर्थोपेडिक एग्जामिनेशन नो एग्जामिनेशन कैन बी कंप्लीट टिल द टाइम वी फॉलो अ प्रॉपर सीक्वेंस इन दीज टॉक्स इन द सीरीज ऑफ टॉक्स वी आर ट्राइंग टू मेक सम गाइडलाइंस दैट यू फॉलो आई एम डॉक्टर अपूर मेहरा लेट मी टेक यू थ्रू दिस जर्नी वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट द रूल नंबर वन you should always be on the right of the patient that's the rule because many a times you are presenting a case and you stand on the left and the examiner might point to you so always stand on the right side right is the right always first introduce yourself to the patient then explain what you're going to do to him about the history taking the examination the sequence of examination and always try to keep in mind keep things very simple for him follow a sequence so that he knows that you are organized and if you are organized then only he will be able to trust you next demonstrate on the normal side first one you will be able to good have a good comparison two if the disease side is painful the patient might not be cooperative to allow you to do it on the other side reassure the patient at every step it's a continuous process and always address the patient with a mr in front of the name or a miss in front of the name handle them with great amount of respect which is very very important in medical science in your history taking it's good to ask him the age mention you are dealing with a male or a female you tell them where have you examined the patient and it's a good idea to tell the occupation because when their limitations are being discussed they will be discussed with reference to the occupation tell if case of uh, if the patient is not able to communicate the informer who is the communicating channel whether he is reliable or not and this becomes so important in case of pediatric patients start with the presenting complaint in the history of presenting complaint talk about a detailed presenting feature which is the most important one talk about the past history of the patient personal history which is often very difficult to delineate is also very very important talk about the treatment history related to the disease or any other systemic disorder in a child talk about the prenatal history the natal history and the postnatal history developmental history when we are talking about the treatment history talk about the specific drugs he is on if it's a child talk about the normal immunization was carried out or not and it's a fair idea to make a comment about the socio economic status but yes many examiners do not like this being mentioned always ask for the disabilities which have been classified by different classification if you are normally able to do everything you are grade zero disability grade 1 is limited recreational disease grade 2 is a professional limitation grade 3 a patient cannot take care of himself can't perform the activities of daily living and grade 4 is a bedridden patient disabilities always talk about is the patient walking aided or unaided if the aid is being taken is it a walker that's a walking frame or is it a stick or something else or a cane he is using is the patient able to use the cane on the same side or the opposite side he is carrying sitting cross legged or squatting because these are two functional abilities that a patient will comment upon going up and down the stairs and which position is more difficult for him ability to eat the food which is so important because it involves flexion of the elbow and abduction of the shoulder two important mo- movements of upper limb washing the face because the upper limb hand has this function of taking care of the face cleaning the face talking about the ability to brush the teeth again involves the movement for the hair care and important care of the clothes also for the fine motor movements talk about the writing ability any change in the writing the patient has and then holding and carrying the objects which are so important for the different grasp the specific grasp are again the important things you should ask the patient and he should be showing in front of the examiner the limitation what you mentioned in the history all cases of lower limbs people often forget the footwear it can always tell you the areas of wear and tear which can tell which which part of the limb is actually wearing out 
and which part of the foot is not bearing the weight on the ground and is there any modification of the footwear in terms of the arch support or the heel support or outer raise or anything for the specific deformities that you can observe. Always remember in cases of lower limb to mention about the footwear examination. Talk about the pulses. Is there 5 plus pulse which is an abnormal pulse with aneurysm. 4 plus is a normal good volume pulse. 3 pulse is good with suboptimal volume. 2 plus pulse is a feeble but without inter-observer dispute and plus is very feeble with inter-observer dispute which is grading of the pulse. So you should remember 4 plus is a normal good volume pulse. Characteristic of pain, orthopedic complaints they start with pain and pain is the commonest symptom. Talk about the site of pain, the mode of pain, the severity of the pain, the nature of the pain. So you should talk about the onset that can also be graded to duration, the severity, how it progressed, is it a vague pain, is there a burning pain, is there a throbbing pain, it's a scalding pain, pin and needle sensation, shooting pain, stabbing pain, constricting pain. Talk about the aggravating factors of the pain the relieving factors of the pain. Talk about the radiation of the pain which is very very important. Talk about the movements associated with the pain. So whenever you have any movement either they are painful or pain free. Talk about the radiation of the pain whether it persists to the original site or referred pain where there is no pain at the original site. Talk about is there a migrating nature of the pain and also talk about is there a diurnal variation in the pain. Do you have more pain in the morning or more pain accompanied by the evening. Also talk about what are the features that cause occurrence of the pain. How frequently it comes. Does, is there a seasonal variation. I have already told you the precipitating and aggravating factors. The relieving factors and is pain associated with any other symptom. In our country always talk about any previous history of tuberculosis and also talk about any spasm of muscle that the patient might experience like the catching of the muscles and abdominal catch or the lower limbs or the calf anything else that is so common to be associated with the pain. So these are the most important things that one should keep in mind. Thank you very much.